Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, October 12th, 2017. Uh, this is the second video today covering trade ideas. I published one earlier with some of the short trade ideas that stand out. It had a few potential longs in there. They needed a little more work. Um, but uh, this this trade, this video, I'll cover a couple of long side trade ideas. Uh, first one up, I'll start here because this one just popped uh, earlier in the trading room today. Let me see if I can find that post here. Here we go in the trading room. A few hours back, uh, I posted a trade idea on RKDA. It's aggressive. Uh, unofficial trade idea because of the aggressive nature. It's a penny stock, and uh, anytime you have a low-priced, you know, low market cap stock like this, um, pretty uh, aggressive, and it usually won't make the front page as an official trade idea. So this was a setup here, uh, aggressive speculative long trade idea long on a breakout above the 39 uh, cent resistance level potential targets. Uh, unadjusted, meaning these are the actual resistance levels are. Um, there are 52, 65, and 89. I listed this is obviously, it only makes sense, the lowest target is your highest probability target. But when I look at the resistance, that's a pretty solid zone. So if you just want to take a pop intraday, this one has already broken out. It's broke out just right before I started the video. I let everybody in the trading room know that it did right as it triggered. Um, so maybe a run up to 52 pullback consolidation there but you keep in mind if you get some traction behind these things these little stocks they can really explode sometimes so sometimes you'll punch right up through the first uh, resistance level so 65 that's my my preferred swing target right now you know i think any reaction off that level if we get a breakout here will be short-lived i think this was a potential flush out bottom here that was a pretty significant support level so watch it, see what happens. Again, you can take profits just under 52, you know, 50, 51, just under there, a few couple pennies below uh, 65. And if you like it, you like the sector, the industry, these are ag inputs. I'm going to give you two other low priced uh, or potential, you know, explosive trade ideas. You know, it goes hand in hand. These low price ones, you have a lot more risk, um, but a lot, a lot more uh, reward potential if they play, pan out. And these are the ones that, you know, put a lot of these on the site several a year that, you know, have triple digit returns. So, you know, define your trading style. If you're not into that and you can't tolerate double digit losses, then stay away from these. So there it is, RDK. Let's see, it looks like it's coming in a little bit. Let me look at a, another chart here. It broke out and might, might still offer an objective uh, uh, entry here if we back test. Uh, there it is, coming back in to that four cent level as we speak. This is a one minute chart. So we just had a back test. Let's see if this holds. Either way, that still gives you an objective entry there because the uh, break point was 40, uh, four cents, I should say, not 40 and uh let's see where, where this one goes so that's one let me give you a couple more uh, i have rtk very similar ticker rentec also an ag input for you those not familiar ag agriculture input those are fertilizers pesticides those type of things uh there it is divergent low unconfirmed you have the indicators pointing lower so you don't have any type of buy signal yet and the trend is down uh we did have a pop we had a divergent low right there and we got a nice pop now let me just try to illustrate just how much these stocks move and how much money can be made if you time it right. That was a 127% rally off that first divergent low. We've come back in. We're going to have an, a second consecutive bullish divergent low if, big if, if it holds here. I think it will. From the look at the chart, I'm seeing some volume coming in. It looks like this one's trying to pound out a bottom. This was also a, a washout move down below the 24 cent, that previous reaction low. When you see that undercut those previous lows, that tends to you know, those that bought here maybe for a longer term play probably put their stops right below that level. It clears them out, shakes out that set of buyers and brings in a new set of buyers if you can regain that level. So that one looks good back above 24, 25. Maybe look for a reversal stick, however you want to trade that. There's a potential targets on that one, uh, 34 cents. These I have adjusted um, for an optimal fill. If I list it T1 equals, that means it's below the actual level. That was 35 cents, that actual level. 41 and in this case 56 so they're set either a penny to three pennies below the actual levels and if that does pan out uh, again you want to wait till it gets back above this level about 24 cents or so you're talking you know potential for over 100 percent return up to that third target and the other one was mbii it's one i've traded on and off over the years we recently had right here at this point down here and this right here is a divergent low you can see downtrend line we broke out 
rallied, came and back tested. This one also, because it's a low priced ag input stock, you know, it's a dollar and that's an important level too. It's trying to hold and defend that $1 zone. I talk about this often when a company's stock falls below a dollar, they usually aggressively defend it to the best of their abilities. Um, to try to get it above there so they don't face a delisting. If you trade it below a dollar too long, you get delisted. So if they have to, they'll do a reverse split. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but they'll, the first thing they do is try to come in and buy with whatever capital they can, whether it be at an insider, you know, they want to take in, buy shares back from the company, throw it in treasury stock, do whatever they need to do. Uh, but that's been my experience. You get these dips below a dollar and usually this fight to, to hold that one dollar level. So this one broke out. It's come back in, back tested the breakout, the, the downtrend line, I should say. And I have a support zone here from about one dollar up to 105. So you can buy it here. It's just above that level today. It tested that 105 level. I think it's, you know, objective long there with a stop somewhat below one dollar, maybe on a one, even two day close. Uh, again, depends on your trading style and your outlook for the sector. But the, those are the three, uh, again, I'll call them aggressive, borderline speculative trades. Uh, but there's a, you know, a technical case to be made or I wouldn't, wouldn't share these. Just a quick flip back to the one minute chart on RKDA. Uh, it's at 41 now. So we came back in, we broke out when as high as 47, came back in, back tested the uh, uh, four cent level. Uh, I, when I say 47, I'm talking 0.47, uh, and so far has, have held that level. And that's what you want to see, especially on, on a closing basis. It'd be nice to see that level held. And then we may see some follow through tomorrow, but, uh, uh, and, and the best case scenario is to see some of these other stocks within that sector pop, especially these low priced ones. CRUS, Cirrus Logic, I shared this uh, recently, is a potential long. I told you I have my concerns based on the longer term charts and the fact that the semis, you know, the trend is still bullish, but uh, you're really buying into the long end of a trend. But again, I, I went over this one in detail in the recent videos, one or both of the videos over the last couple of days highlighting trade ideas. So you can check out the notes there. There it is. It's support right there, 5178-ish, give or take, you know, had a brief pop below it, but it has a divergent low and it's one of the few semis. It's already well off its highs. It's had a correction. So if the semis have another leg up or if they're going to continue higher, then maybe this one already had its correction in an ongoing bull market and bullish divergence again at support. Um, so uh, that's one that you might want to look at. Fox, you can do Fox or Fox A. This is FOX. Um, Fox A is just their uh, class A shares. Uh, ideally, I went over this one, I believe, recently as well. You have a divergent low right here. You can see the right there is a higher low on the PPO as well as the RSI. But my, my preferred scenario, you have a pretty nice support level right here. You can see these reactions. So my preferred scenario, see one more thrust down, uh, an extension of these existing divergences, like something like this, come back down on the PPO, or if you're using a MACD, it'll look very similar, and then see a reversal there, because uh, I'd love to buy uh, divergent lows at support. Support would be the more important, well, they, they go hand in hand, I shouldn't say that. Uh, just a fall down to support, if you don't have divergences and everything else, can mean we you know break through that support. So. Uh, again, that's one potential long for you, and it's a you know dividend stock, not much, 1.38% dividend yield, but it's a potential growth in income play. Uh, w M I H. This is a low price, aggressive stock. This is one of the reinsurance uh, stocks, reinsurance companies. But again, it's under a dollar a share now, and it just broke, and you can see it's dropped down. It has a, it had support here around 110 broke that support had a sell-off now if it can regain it that's bullish and if it can take out this this is a potential downtrend line we only have a couple reactions so don't i'm not too sold i put a much higher weighting on this 110 level if it can get back above there and if it does it probably at least comes back here to to dollar 35 might not sound like much but you know from there that'd be a 22 and a half percent rally if this divergent low holds if we get confirmed divergence soon some people go long simply on a, a bullish crossover on the ppo or macd if you get that maybe you go long here uh, you'd have a much more favorable entry if you buy it you know around 91 that's about a 48 percent almost a 50 percent gain from there so Again, speculative, low, uh, high risk, high potential return. And also, you can wake up when you have a stock that's trading under a dollar a share. You can wake up to a bankruptcy filing and that stock could, could be worth nothing. So just be careful. If you're not sure what you're doing, stay away from low price stocks. That would be 
uh, my advice. MDT, Medtronic, I've covered recently. It's a medical device sector. A lot of those charts in that sector are bearish. This one may have a little more downside. Uh, so I will tell you right now, this is my if things get ugly target. This one's going to keep going down here to 73, 17 area, some decent support. Not super well defined, but I could see that possibility. But as of now, there's bullish divergence. The stock has already corrected quite a bit. It's come down from almost 90 all the way to you know mid 70s. Um, we have positive divergence here. So if it can hold this 76.40 level, if it is support, uh, you might get a bounce back up here to the 79 area, maybe even all the way up to 82. Uh, so one that I'm passing along, but my confidence is not high enough to make that an official trade idea. And finally, I think I shared this one already. If, if the gold and silver, if the correction gold and silver is over now, or even if it's not, you know, I told you, but worst case, I expect one more thrust down in gold and the precious metal stocks, uh, and then a resumption of the uptrend. And I think this silver stock is set really set up pretty nice there's a pretty well defined downtrend line but we do have resistance just above it and there's a resistance zone so to be safe uh, give it the benefit of the doubt you might want to hold off until the second uh, line right here that horizontal resistance level around 288 is taken out uh, and that would open up a nice move again always i always like to you know, confirm my analysis or align it with the charts of gold, silver, obviously a silver mining stock, um, as well as a US dollar. So as of now, this is only a setup, it has a little work to be done, but uh, one with some potential there. And to wrap this video up uh, on a somewhat related note uh, regarding, you know, trying to sniff out individual stocks and sectors. Um, for those of you who follow the site for a while, you know, one consistent theme I've been harping on for gosh, a, a good, at least a good year now, is, uh, you know, trying to move away from a focus on trading the broad markets. Um, you know, it's been a buy and hold market, no doubt. We're at you know, all-time highs. Nobody can argue that. And go back in time, put all your money in QQQ, leverage up as much as you can, 300%, whatever your broker allow you, and tuck it away. That would have been, you know, but that's a hindsight trade. Now, for traders, swing traders, uh, it's been a very, very difficult. It's been a slow, steady grind up. There have been a few in the last few years, some swing trading ops within the broad market, but for the last year or so, it's not. It's been a pretty slow and steady grind up, and that's not where swing traders make money. And the article that I'm highlighting here came out from the journal today. The title was, The Stock Market is More a Market of Stocks Than Usual. And I just figured I'd share this. It's interesting, the statistics here. The S&P 500 has 11 sectors. I cover those sectors uh, every now and then I'll do a video. Let's see if I can pull them up for you. Okay, here they are. There's 11 sectors, financials, energy, healthcare, technology, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, utilities, industrials, basic materials, telecom, and real estate. Those are the uh, uh, 11 sectors within the S&P 500. So going back to the picture we just had. So um, they're stating that the sectors within the S&P 500 currently have the weakest relationship within the broader index, meaning within the uh, compared to the S&P 500 in at least eight years, in the last eight years, or in at least eight years is yeah, what it says. So it goes on to say the relationship between the S&P 500 and its sectors fell to an average of 41% on Tuesday, down from 65% a month earlier. Now, what does that mean? It's explained above. If you have a positive correlation, 100% means that everything moves in lockstep. Uh, negative correlation of the most you can have is a negative 100% means everything moves directly inverse. In other words, if the S&P 500 went up 1%, whatever it's inversely correlated will go down 1%. And zero is no correlation, meaning they're just not related at all. So this is a pretty low correlation. Uh, you know, as it says here, it's at least eight years. We haven't seen such a low correlation. And there's the reason I'm getting to this. It says U.S. stock equity markets are pre behaving like the proverbial market of stocks rather than a stock market. Uh, it goes on to say... Uh, the implied correlation among the 50 biggest stocks in the S&P 500 hit an all-time low following the post-election uh, decline, a post-election decline. Uh, it's becoming easier for investors to pick stocks that they will believe outperform the broader market. And I've talked about this recently, too. I mentioned the trading room, I think it was yesterday, that the um, uh, quant funds, the hedge funds are, for the first time in a while, vastly out 
underperforming stock pickers. So you're for the first time in a while, the last few months, uh, those hedge funds that, you know actually use a good old fashioned fundamental or technical analysis to pick stocks uh, are outperforming those computer driven models. Uh, and that has a lot to do, they said, with the low volatility. Uh, so either way, um, and excuse me, I had to pause the video for an interruption. Um, where was I? So I went on to say that, you know, it's becoming easier lately for investors to pick stocks. They will believe to outperform the broader market. Uh, that's a trend that I've been stating before. It's individual stock selection and uh, sector rotation over the broad market, especially for swing traders. You know, we're in and out within, you know, days, weeks, couple months, that's swing trading. So, you know, earlier this year, we, you know, we caught a tremendous move on the solar stocks. We've had some trades on the energy stocks. There's been long, there's been plenty of short ops. If you look at some of the, the sectors that, uh, you know, airlines, casino stocks, some other things that I've mentioned, they've had corrections in last year. Or so, you know, in double digits, well over 20%. So uh, that's sector rotation yet within the, the broad market markets, the broad indices continue to gyrate higher. So that's where the money's to be made. And this article makes a case that's probably going to be um, the case going forward is that uh, individual stock picking and security selection will outperform, um, you know, a, a trade on the broad market. And especially, keep in mind, the broad market, you know, this uptrend will not last forever. There's going to be a correction. There hasn't been one. We're very overdue. Statistically speaking, it's reflected in the charts. Um, and don't ever become fooled or complacent by this low volatility. And, and just when it looks like the market will uh, go up forever, that's when it stops going up forever. And, you know, we're not talking the end of the world here. We're talking at least a good pullback, 10, 20 percent. Uh, who knows, possibly more. But uh, again, don't become complacent. Uh, finally, to wrap that up, tech stocks are the most correlated at 80 percent this week. Now, this is an impressive stat, though down from 94 percent a month ago. Tech stocks had a 94% correlation to the broad market. Let's see what that means here. Here's technology, XLK. Uh, let me show you another board, a clean board. This is what XLK looks like. So this is the market. And as I just showed you, or I just had it here, uh, this is a couple months old. They may have rebalanced this a little bit, but uh, you know, 23, almost a quarter weighting in the S&P 500. One fourth of the results or the performance from the S&P 500 simply comes from tech stocks. So uh, live and die by tech. If tech, not if tech corrects, when it corrects. And, you know, here's the chart. This is a clean, pretty clean chart to me. A very well-defined uptrend line, bearish rise and wedge, confirmed with negative divergence. Yes, there's been negative divergence for a while. We had it right here first. This was the first divergent point. Um, it didn't play out for a correction, just a little sideways action. But as we continue to wedge higher here, we still have divergences. They're only potential divergence, so you need to see that confirmed. Uh, there's a possibility if things keep moving up, those divergences are taken out, but as of now, they do exist. And most importantly, here's an uptrend line that comes all the way off you know, the mid 2016 lows. So we're watching that trend line. And uh, not coincidentally, if you look at QQQ, uh, let's find the right board on the Qs. It's going to look the same if I can find a board that matches. There it is. I knew I had one. I have uh, almost 10 different boards on each stock. There it is. So that looks almost identical to that XLF rising wedge chart, uh, as it should. Uh, S&P 500 is not much different. Again, I was just going over what would the S&P 500 weighting was a, almost a quarter percent. Uh, technology is, I think, over half of the NASDAQ 100. So uh, safe to say when tech breaks, the uh, the Qs break and even the S&P 500 will break. Uh, and when does that come? Well, break of this trend line. And these wedges, by the way, not by coincidence, also mirror those wedges in the trend lines on the um, semiconductors that I continue to highlight. So, uh, you know, until they break, the trend is up. But uh, as we're wedging, it's showing the momentum is waning. And that's also confirmed here with these indicators. You know, uh, PPO, if you put up a MACD, you'd see the same thing in the RSI making lower highs. Okay, let's wrap it up there. Um, hopefully, you know, guys, I'm trying to look, I'm, I'm working hard to find some long side trade ideas. Again, you know, just because the market's all, at all time highs or no, not far from it doesn't make it easy, at least by my setups. If you're a momentum trader, sure, you just keep buying the highs or you buy any pullback on a dip. 
That'll work till it stops working, but I can't make an objective case to go long unless when I cover, when I do my analysis on, uh, you know, the 60 minute charts, the daily charts, I'm showing you pullback targets for a correction or any pullback. Those are also, you know, support levels that could provide an objective long entry uh, for those who are long waiting to buy a dip instead of buying at the highs. All right, we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you